my question to you is, did you come prepared, wait, did any of those other members who are going to speak or have, uh, or have spoken come prepared with action steps that we can take away and we can do, we, letters we can Thank send? Thank you, that comes across. Thank you. Yes, Sue, your answer. Probably the first thing I would recommend is you write to the Governor-General of Australia. Wait, what? Kate, thanks. Lock. And to the, your local member, of all the documentation's there for you. Right and say this is. I know this is happening. It is not my will, as, as someone who voted you in, that this happens. I want this change back to this proper structure. That's Thank probably you. your first step. You could Good. say. Well your question, please. Thank you for the presentation. My question is: Are all political parties not got an ACN number, and do they not have a foreign owner? Thank you. I believe that may well be the case. Uh, g'day. Thanks for the presentation. It was great. Uh, do you have an organisation? Um, we have a, a, a private organisation. Oh, sorry. We started a group called Landowners, Farmers Landowners Rights in Australia, Flora, which is when we're really looking at the issue of the land. Since the constitution things come in, um, we don't have a group as such, but we're certainly working on a website so the information will be out there. Okay. So if you want to leave your name and address, I can yes. pass it when it's done. Come on, Peter Sanderson, thank you. Thank you. Have you, invest have you investigated the legality of a sovereign nation taxing uh, a colony, Australia, without a people's referendum? That's actually something that's been... Uh, I know some of the researchers are, are starting to brain in different directions. I've been concentrating on a lot of council things, but that's been a question that's been asked. And the, actually, I would guess the answer, short answer would be that it wouldn't be legal because we haven't agreed to the whole structure in the first place. Yeah. Thanks very much, Sue. Yeah. Yes, your question, yeah. Sue. So, Sue, could you briefly outline the nature of the uh, case that you're putting before the High Court? Yes. Uh, the most particular one is uh, a lady called Mrs Burns. Um, Mrs Burns was a, a policeman's wife. Uh, he died in the course of duty. At a later date, she wanted to retire on a little bit of land they had. That land was in an area that had been investigated for a wildlife um, reserve for you know, the pink sulphur-crested um, wombat or something. <laughs> um, and um, quite a bit of the land around it had been set aside for that particular animal. The other land had been subdivided. Her land was the only land left that had no issues with the, with the, um, the animal. And when she went along to get it developed, the uh, government official at that time, and this was only a couple of years ago, so it's in this Queensland constitution structure, said, no, you can't because that animal might want to visit your land. <laughs> So it then went to, this is where this whole issue started with the, the head um, legal fellow. It went to court, um, the court upheld the, the government and that's gone on to the High Court case. It is that particular one, even though there are other issues coming in in other cases, that has been the main focus. Thank you, Sue. Your question, madam. Our council in Port Macquarie had just been dismissed and there's an administrator. My question is this. Do we actually see Fabian socialism here in action? 100 per cent, yes. 100 per cent. Thank you. Your question, madam. Is it correct as a Queenslander now having a property, or so-called property in, in Queensland, does that mean I'm a, a, a corporation and does that mean I can sue the uh, Queensland government that's also a corporation? Now that's an interesting point. I can't answer that. But certainly you are, um, you are a member of the corporation up there in an asset. Thank you. Madam, your question. Um, when I went to Parliament House in Brisbane, uh, I noticed that there, there was a beautiful Senate chamber, but they don't have a Senate. Mm. Uh, when did they um, abolish the Senate, and would it be a good idea, and how could we get it back? They removed the Senate, I think it was in 1922, um, and they haven't had one for that length of time, which is one of the reasons that they're the first state that's been able to move into this system because they didn't have that double check in the government. Um, it was removed by referendum, so for whatever reason, the people did agree to it. Um, so it could be that if it was, the people were ever asked again, it could come back, but that would have to be a question they were asked. Thank you. Your question, sir. Uh, so you mentioned that the uh, High Court or the courts do not recognise the word um, illegal, yes. but all this stuff, the High Courts recognise the word invalid. And what I'm saying, and uh, I'd like your... A response, all this stuff that you've just mentioned is all invalid. Yes, Thank but you. it has to be proved to be invalid. 
um, in that you have to ask the court the right questions, which is what we're saying. We're coming at it from the top and saying, if this was done without, is it valid? In that case, does this then come in? So you're right with that particular wording, yes. Thank you. Your question. Uh, there, there are many grants available through land care groups. I'd like to know if there are any strings of, uh, to those grants on the landholder. Yes, you're essentially selling your land to them for money. What they're doing is um, by offering you a deal, uh, for example, we had that happen on our property. We've got a creek runs through it. Um, a neighbour went to, there was a rock bar causing a problem. We talked about blowing the, just a small hole to get the creek back on course. We were told that the creek has the right to go where it wants. Um, those same officials who are the Lockwood Catchment Management, those same officials then uh, worked in with a neighbour to fence a particular area of creek off. He was getting a lot of money to you know, put dams and things like that in. Fence that particular creek off, but they were going to fence both sides. They were taking up to 40 metres of our property. Now that's locked up for 10 years. And in that time you're not supposed to use or you're not allowed to use the land. Uh, which means that at the end of 10 years, who knows whether you actually go back and use it because they also have a, a situation where if you don't use something, and this is happening on the, use, the Queens, this is happening on the south coast where if you haven't lived in a house for 12 months, your existing user rights are gone. Now that's not constitutional, that's statute stuff. So I would say that in that 10 years of having that land locked up, you would lose the right to use it. And they would say, well, we gave you the money in exchange for land. So we're, we're firmly convinced that will lose your ownership rights. Thank you. Your question. The Bigelow Corporation. Is there any chance or any danger that the Bigelow Corporation could be taken over yes. by a tyrant like Mugabe or something? 100%. We know that um, the, new, the American government owes 80% of the world's debt and much of it is to places like China, etc. Now, the thing is, if the Queensland government is now borrowing on the improved value of your land, etc., and start borrowing huge money, someone's got to pay some of it back, or if it's for a shareholding structure, shareholders have got to be paid. So if that all falls apart, where's the debt paid from? It's paid from the assets. You guys are the assets and your land. So yes. The gentleman that had a second question might get on the queue. Yes, please. Okay, hi. Uh, back in the States, the issue of environmental issues is being utilized to give reason for the state to confiscate lands. As yes. an example, uh, there was a case where a guy who lived on a flat area, and after a rainfall, the state declared that if you had a 10 foot by 6 foot, something like that, 10 feet by 6 feet area of water that remained standing for more than 24 hours, they could declare your land a wetland. <laughs> is this something that you see uh, foresee starting to happen here in, uh, in Australia. I haven't, that's a very interesting, I like the wetland idea, um, but we haven't ha actually heard of a case like that, but certainly the government are moving to claim more water. There's a fellow in Queensland who's one of the case, cases who built a big dam. His idea was to have that water there supply a retirement village nearby in exchange for a reduction in him living in the retirement village. The government keeps pumping that dam out. They won't allow him to keep that water. Now, they're also claiming water. Now, water, under your ownership rights, is a gift from God. No one can own water. You can only own the land under the water. And it's the same with creeks and things like that. You could, the, the government all own the... or they retain ownership by a crown land of creeks, and, but they can only retain what's under these. So all these moves to start implementing rules and restrictions on water are actually hugely unconstitutional and also completely against your ownership rights. So that's an interesting one and it could well come. Thank you, Madam. Your question. Yes, indeed. Could I ask you, have you read the full history of the Fabian Society written by Ray Matthews, a politician, a Labor Party politician? And if you haven't read that book, it's called Australia's First much. Fabians. And if you haven't read it, please get it and read it. And Thank it'll you. explain you. all no, you've no, talked about. You said it. That's fine. Thank you. Yep. So, your question. We'll make this the last one. Thank you. Madam, uh, so are you uh, or any of your organisation aware uh, that all of the senior politicians, all of the courts, all of the governors and the Governor-General, and when I say all the courts, or all the way up to the High Court, the Masons? Have, sold out to, have sold out to 
and are being engineered uh, by the organisers of the New World Order, the Illuminati? Yes, we're completely yeah. aware of that. Um, we've, I mean, obviously we're not going in that direction to study it completely because this has been such a focus, but there's a lot of information coming on the side and we're very aware of that. Um, we're aware that Bob Hawke received an award from the Fabian Society for his work towards removing private land ownership. We're aware that um, Gough Whitlam conducted a study called um, uh, Royal Commission into Land Tenures headed by um, Kerr and that actually proposed that all land remain in government ownership and that the people only be allowed to live on the land. Um, we're aware, yes, we are aware of all that. Um, this, is a, this plan is an international plan to remove our common law ownership rights in Australia to put us into the structure of government that is proposed, the civil law structure that is proposed by the UN. Yes, we're very aware of all the, what, where it's come from. Sue, you've done a remarkable amount of research <laughs> in this area. <laughs>